Uh, Gareth, an entertaining night's football, but uh, sadly bowing out of this year's EFL trophy. Yeah, disappointing as well because I wanted to progress in this. You know, uh, we went strong, um, even though nine changes. I think it shows where the club is now. You know, and uh, some real good individual performances. I'm glad Dower got his goal. He's been working really hard and from that midfield area. Good to see Brandon uh, starting and Damani starting. I thought looked lively goal for them. You know, so and some valuable minutes and a, and a debut for Christy Ward who almost nicked a winning goal there. He got a, a good header at the end there. Uh, Max Straight coming up as well, giving plenty of uh, optimism and uh, anticipation, but it wasn't to be. Um, what I will say is they've had to bring uh, you know, their, their main man on to, to, to get them back level, and, and he's done a great job. You know, and uh, Fair play to Peter, they're through. Um, I think the, the Stevenage game, we look back at now and think, you know, we, we lost it there, or, or even the Spurs game at home where a win there would have, uh, would have put us through. But, um, no, we uh, were pleased with the performance. You know, there's uh, there's one or two bones to pick out that, but um, on the whole, pleasing night. No injuries. Um, Chris Bruno again, I thought was immense in, in coming through things uh, and becoming a better and better player each time. And uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's nice to, to have no injuries going into the weekend now. Big game against MK Dons. We are FA Cup and League left now and uh, we'll be taking both of them very seriously starting with MK on Saturday. There's no more games left to and it was a good performance tonight for those development players and that's less games now for those boys to play. Yeah, I, th I think the one or two loans may happen now because they need competitive <coughs> football, you know, and there's some good boys in there that um, that will be future stars for this club without a doubt, you know. I've said over and over that Sam Grace has done a great job in, uh, in what he does with the development side and Chris Verino last year and Anis Mometa the year before. I mean that's a, that's the biggest success rate than most clubs, you know, one a year. If we can keep that up, that that'd be fantastic. Um, but um, yeah, competitive games now. Sam does a great job in getting friendlies. We've had Maidenhead, we've had Norwich, we've had we've got Bournemouth coming up, and um, but it, it's tough now with such a big squad. I think the injuries that I harped on about at the start of the season have cost us in the Papa John's Trophy because I think we could have been a lot stronger against Stevenage, a lot stronger against Tottenham. And those games would have would have paid a you know a, a, a bigger points total in this uh, in this mini league that you, you start off with. But no, that's that's the breaks. Um, I say really good to have the squad members coming back now for Saturday. Hopefully, one or two more fit for that game. Um, local derby MK Dons. Last one for me. Jack Grimmer went off just before half time. Was that a precaution one? Yeah, he's uh, he's had a, a, an issue with his knee at the back of his knee, and he's been carrying it for quite a while. Um, so yeah, he, an experienced player like Jack knows his own body. So. When he says it's time to uh, to come off, you, you listen and uh, and hopefully he'll be back back fit for Saturday. Um, I don't think it's anything too major, but um, again, you know Jack Wakeley getting more minutes coming through. Uh, you know we've got um, Jasper, I thought again solid as always. So we've got some real uh, good competition for places here now, and that's what it's all about. So um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a long season. Going to have one or two knocks. Uh, I say once we get everyone back, um, I intend to make a big dent in this league, and uh, and I believe we can we can be amongst the, the big boys to the end of the season. Right, let's get the real questions in then. <laughs> Hands up and we'll, we'll go to right through yeah. now. Yes, sir. All right, so I know there's two key similarities between both times you played Peterborough. Um, Peterborough actually had more possession. I just didn't know if that was a tactical uh, decision from you to let them have the ball or you were surprised by it. That's... No, it's a, a, it's a common theme in, you know, um, working with different managers, play different ways. And I think <clears throat> throughout my years in charge here, uh, we have probably become more of a destroying counter team uh, than a possession based build up team and uh, and I love playing that way you know so um, it's, it's ironic that often when we have more possession uh, we often struggle but um, less possession is fine possession doesn't win your games yeah. um, honestly it doesn't believe me we uh, we got promoted at Wembley against Oxford with 28% possession that day so um, you know it, it doesn't mean you win games uh, it's goals and key moments so yeah possession is uh, is low down on my list of, of KPIs. Thank you. Yeah, it's just not. It's nice, you know, to have that. Uh, football changes very quickly, you know, and, and I think you, you've, uh, you know, you can't be too high and you can't be too low. So after the three defeats, you've got to, you've got to keep consistent. And, and now, as you're saying, three games undefeated, I don't think I've cracked anything. It's just, it's that consistency that over the season will, will, will pay dividends, you know. And, and I think. Uh, the managers who then start believing their own hype will start believing that the fans hype, which I run play and never ever look at, you know. Um, so, you know, stats again don't mean too much to me. It's performance based. Um, 
but it's great to go into this game with a bit of confidence and of course defeats hit the boys mentally and it, it, it takes a lot to pick that up but um, they're in a good place so maybe concentrate more on the tactical approach that we're going to do for round okay. What is the relationship uh, like with the current ownership ever since the change? What's the biggest difference you've noticed? Yeah, um, obviously the, the, the biggest difference I've noticed is the resources that we now have. Um, so when the Kuris came in they promised certain things that they delivered on um, financially and, and that was it's incredible to, to see the club where we were 10 years ago and no absolute no slight on the trust or the ownership then because we just didn't have the money we, you know we, we, we're competing in the league where the top six teams probably get 20,000 or more fans every week that drops about 700,000 pounds on your bottom line every two weeks we don't have that you know so We've had to scrimp and scrape and compete under the trust, and they were they were fantastic running the club, but the budget just wasn't there. The training ground wasn't fantastic. What the Kurigs have done is they've come in, they've backed me from day one because I think they've seen when I had nothing and, and what I did with nothing and how hard we worked. Had chances to leave, but still stayed with the loyalty, um, and they've delivered on exactly what they've said. So. Um, I think a big thing for me is keeping in constant communication with them, whether win, lose or draw, you've got to do that because they own the club. Um, and working together is, is, is key for me, you know, rather than um, sort of an owner that you, you're afraid of or an owner that you, you know, you, you're worried about what he's going to think. You give your best, uh, I think that's, you know, that, that, that's, that's all you can do. And uh, Rob has just been nothing but supportive of me. Pete is fantastic here as well, he gets involved. Um, may have heard him tonight, he's very loud as well, so you can hear him on most games. And Missy as well on the board, you know, they're, um, <clears throat> I think she controls Rob and, uh, and doesn't let him get too carried away. But um, it's it's a brilliant place to be, uh, and Rob sold me his vision in the summer. Because um, believe me, I've had one or two opportunities to move on, but um, I'm fully invested in Wickham and Wonders and getting them to the next level. And I firmly believe we can do that, hopefully this season, but um, definitely in, in the seasons to come very soon. Thank you, everybody. One, one line of advice for the season, uh, Yeah, uh, put your own spin on things because you're all individuals, you know, so as a football manager, um, when I was put in charge, I didn't, the first thing you think is, oh, oh what's, what should you be doing as a football manager? Um, and then if you start looking at other people and what they do and try and model yourself on that, I think that's the wrong thing. I think you your personality should all come out in your writing and your questioning and your pieces because you, one or two of you will get noticed and go, wow, this, this person, we love his style, we love the way he or she does this. And I think that's really important to keep being yourselves, you know? Um, don't try and clone anyone else, don't try and just go with the flow. Be different, be special, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Who's got a question for Joe? Yes, mate. Uh, after the disappointment uh, at Wembley last season against Sunderland, how hard was it over the summer to kind of rejuvenate kind of the, the morale? Uh, obviously, there was some change in the change room, but kind of the players to try and get them focused towards this season and kind of push into the playoffs again. Um, first of all, it was difficult. Um, it's never nice to, to lose in the playoff final. You put so much into a whole season. And then to, for it to come down to one game and you know the, the rewards at the end of it, not just personally for the club, for your friends, for your family, for everyone who's there as well. So it is tough and I think the best thing was everyone just gets away, goes and spends time with their loved ones and things. Um, but then I made sure, like I spoke to every single player, I made sure I sent a message to everyone just being like, look, we've had a fantastic season, we've, we've done really well and, and use that now as a, it's kind of like something to remember. So remember how much it hurt and make sure it doesn't happen again and um, look, football changes so quickly players go players come in the new players didn't have that feeling the old players have gone in different things in different situations so um, football moves on and, you, and you've got to make sure you move on with it otherwise you'll be stuck behind so um, I think that was kind of the focus um, I just uh, I distinctly remember uh, you having a good performance uh, against Cheltenham Town and I just wanted to know if uh, any away fans have ever actually got under your skin or if it ever affects you whilst you're playing football. 
I wouldn't say they've got under my skin. Um, I've had a few insta instances, the Cheltenham one, with um, yeah. <laughs> when it was yeah, taking a corner, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, were you there? Were you, yeah, I was. What, as a Cheltenham fan? Yeah. Was it you giving me a view? Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, my mates, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell them thanks for the motivation. Um, yeah, never really got, I get a lot of stick the position I play in them and taking set pieces, you know, away fans with corners and stuff. And we've had it here a few times, years ago in the playoffs when we played Plymouth, 2014-15, I was getting loads of stick in the, in the playoffs and we scored again, similar thing to Vokesy's goal from, from the corner and I just turned to them and probably did the same thing. <laughs> I made sure with those guys, I, I went and shook one of their hands straight away and he was like, look, fair play. So when it's like that, I don't mind it. I don't want to stick we, as long we, as they can take it back. We still rattle him to this day from that Good. moment. So. Never <laughs> stop. <laughs> Thank you. Chris at the back there. Um, it gave me kind of like a home in football. Um, you speak to a lot of people in football at all levels, and they, they kind of chase football around. Um, kind of at a contract for a couple of years, or a year, two, three years, whatever it is, then you move and you've got to start again. You have to move your family. Sometimes you're moving kids. Um, you know, I've got a wife, so it's not as easy just to move to a new club, you know, she's got work and things like that. So it is, it's been great for me to, to be settled. Um, I've, I've loved it. I wouldn't have stayed if I hadn't loved every minute of it. It's, it's an environment where it's able to help me as a person, as well as a, as a player. I feel like I've been, become a better person. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but, um, you know, you have a lot of chats with Richard Dobson, the assistant, and he's all about, I want, to, I want to make sure that players leave better people, not just better players. And I think that's really important. So. Um, I know a lot. I've said a lot of teams will say it's home, but for me, this is it's been great. I've settled not too far from the area, and and that will be my home now for, for forever. I don't want to go back to where I used to come from. Um, don't tell my parents that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 become a home for me, and I yeah, I've loved it. And what does the player need to do to start to fill that void? I don't think anyone can fill that void. To be yeah. fair, um, look, he's a huge character, not just. The, within our club but the whole of football everyone knows about him so it's, you can't replace someone like that it's up to then other players to kind of step up um, who were maybe a little bit quieter or maybe a little bit more subdued to kind of step up and and be a bigger presence themselves um, I'm not one who's like Bayo and, and Bayo you can hear him coming before you see him coming um, so I'm not going to be one of those I'm not that type of character but I'll make sure that he was great with you know, pulling people to one side, some of the younger lads who are not necessarily in the team and, and explaining what they need to do and help them that way. And, and I feel like I can kind of take those little bits from him. Um, we've lost Bayo, we lost Anti Stewart, David Stockdale, three big characters. And uh, But we've we've got players now that you've seen this season that their personalities have stepped up and they've got a year older and now they feel like they can kind of be their own character and their own personality. And it's great to see that, that some of the young lads, even some of the boys who have come in the, in the summer for the B team have have really grown as people and, and some of them you can't get to, to shut up but it's, um, it's a good thing as well.